Have a looming deadline for a major research project? Whether you're an undergrad writing your first paper or an established author with multiple publications, navigating the research ecosystem can be daunting. That's why the libraries at Columbia University have created From Books to Bytes, Navigating the Research Ecosystem, a set of online resources that define the research cycle, provide you with practical strategies, and guide you through the vast resources available to you at Columbia. The stages of the research cycle recommend that you plan, explore, manage, draft, preserve, and share your work. These stages are not necessarily linear, but they are all connected and all necessary to produce your best research work. Understand research data. Data is a big, complicated concept. From charts and graphs to servers, mobile phone networks, and dense informational reports, the term data can mean many things. This video will focus on a particular kind of data, research data. The National Institute of Health or NIH, defines scientific data, more broadly called research data, as the recorded factual material commonly accepted in the scientific community as necessary to validate and replicate research findings, regardless of whether the data are used to support scholarly publications. Let's break this definition down. Recorded factual material can include numeric data, typically numbers organized in tables, spatial data, information that includes location coordinates, typically represented on a map, and textual data, text organized or encoded to allow for automated analysis. Research data should be replicable. It should allow researchers to reproduce comparable results using the same methodology. And finally, a data set is a legitimate academic output on its own. A published data set can be the basis for other researchers to analyze and create new knowledge in the research ecosystem. If researchers are gathering the data themselves, then they are working with first-hand data. However, it is often the case that a researcher would use data that has already been collected and structured. In this case, the researcher would be encountering second-hand data. Some examples include census data, Pew Research data and other data sets provided by think tanks, United Nations data, and Google Maps data. Scholars and researchers analyze research data to reveal trends or patterns that are not always apparent from an investigation of other types of primary sources. But one of the biggest misconceptions about research data is that we often think of it in terms of individual statistics, charts, maps, graphs, and other visualizations. These are actually interpretations of research data rather than the research data itself. When the underlying research data is available, it can be used to verify findings, validate interpretations, and support future research. How is research data used? Let's take a look at some examples of how researchers employ three main categories of research data. Number one, Numeric data, information, often numbers represented in tables, are most commonly organized in the form of a spreadsheet or a CSV file. A researcher might make a spreadsheet of the percentage of the United States population that buys a certain brand of soda broken down by age. This data set could be used by researchers to examine various aspects of dental and medical health. It could also be used by soda marketing teams to help them determine how best to advertise. Number two, spatial data, sometimes called geodata, is information that explicitly encodes location coordinates for the data, which then often gets represented on a map. A researcher might compile geographic data about all known bicycle accidents in New York City from a particular year and then place that data on a map. Number three, Textual data is made up of text-based documents that have been organized or encoded to allow for text analysis methods. A researcher might identify and evaluate groups of related keywords and phrases within a set of texts to glean insights that might not be apparent. For example, one might use textual data by analyzing all New York Times articles over several decades to see how language related to women in the workplace has changed over time. Can data be biased? 
It's important to keep in mind that research data is created by human beings who carry their own implicit and explicit biases. Even when working with a raw data set, you are not looking at the unmediated truth about the subject of the data. Someone has already made decisions about how to collect, organize, and present the data to the world. For example, the U.S. Census is generally considered an authoritative source on demographics and population numbers in the United States, but many factors affect the accuracy of census data, including which questions are included, how answer options are phrased, and the way in which answers are collected. For the 2020 census, there was controversy about whether to ask respondents about their citizenship status. Opponents feared that asking this question would discourage undocumented residents and their families from responding to the census at all, which would result in undercounts. Ultimately, this question was not asked in 2020. Additionally, census questions and methodology can change from census to census, which can make comparing data over the decades challenging. Researchers must be careful to understand the different census data sets before making any comparisons. Remember, the first step in identifying and analyzing data for your project is to develop a research question. Once you've identified your research question, the Columbia University Libraries can help you find reliable and trustworthy data, comprehend bias in data, and format data for your specific needs. Talk to a data librarian. Research Data Services at Columbia Libraries is a team of librarians available to meet with you about your project and support you along the way. Email data at library.columbia.edu to get started. We hope this video has offered some insight into the research cycle and how to best understand research data. We encourage you to familiarize yourself with the other videos and resources in the From Books to Bytes series, as they all delve deeper into the resources available to you at the Columbia University Libraries. And remember, you can always consult with your subject librarian and visit our Ask a Librarian service on the Columbia Libraries website.